Hey, uh, you know, Jeff uh, asked me the other day, said, how would you and Doris like to be on the radio? And we jumped at the chance, I'm telling you. <laughs> Well, now, I went home and told Doris, and she said, goody, well, I'd like to be on the radio. So here we are. We haven't done this for about 30 years. I think uh, we used to go every Saturday night. They had a uh, the hometown jamboree at New Boston. And we, when I wasn't having a baby, I went. <laughs> every once in a while, I got delayed, you know. Is any of you people here that used to come to the hometown jamboree Hey, great. The rest of you is too young, I reckon. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, I was over there sitting so I could hear the music, and Doris come and got me and said, uh, uh, what are we going to do? And I said, I thought you figured out what we were going to do. And she said, no, I thought you did. And nobody knows what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> so if we zig when they zag, uh, just, just look over it. Yeah, I'm a nervous wreck anyhow, coming down here tonight. Uh, Doris was driving, and uh, boy, she was, she was giving me fits. And all of a sudden, she run this little boy on a bicycle off the road, and I said, what'd you do that for? I told you to give him the right of way. Is that what you That's said? What I, I thought you said get him right away, and so I tried. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, then a, a little dog dashed across there. She, she let it get away too. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I remind me of a little dog I used to have a long time ago. I'd give $100 for that dog. I loved it. It, it was part uh, Airedale and part Bull. Well, my goodness, I never saw a dog like that. What part was Bull? The, the whole part about the $100. <laughs> <laughs> well, well you, I know you've heard this song before. High on the mountain, what did I see? Bear tracks, bear tracks, moving back at me. Better get your rifle, boy, before it's too late. The bear's got a little pig and pit for the game. He's been out the river and he's brought a bucket. So I tied him out and I'm making dirt. He's going to be the river and he's going to be the river. He's going to be the river. He's going to be the river. It's hard talking to me in the car and me not knowing, uh-huh, uh-huh, and I don't know what she's talking about. She went and bought me some hearing aids, and uh, I've been trying to use them at work, and uh, them earphones is already loud, and I take them out and I put them back, and uh, finally we got out the guitar, and I decided to see how I sounded, and I sounded awful. I pity you people. So I, they're, all, they're hanging over in my coat pocket. I felt better without them. And I For the first time in his life, he heard how he sounded, and he put them in his coat pocket. <laughs> or maybe he heard how I sounded. No, I, no, I, I sound good this way. <laughs> this way. You know, I want to tell you about that dog that, that we had. 
Oh, I took it out in the country down where my, in Kentucky where my uncle lived, and uh, he's going to keep it for me. There's an old tomcat who used to go to sleep on the front porch every day, and that dog would see him there, and he'd take after him. He'd run around the house and run up this tree every day, same thing. And that tree got some kind of worms on it, and, it, they, and in the fall of the year, they'd be falling around, and made my uncle so aggravated he saw the tree down. And day after he saw the tree down, that dog saw the cat asleep, and he took after it, and the cat ran around there and run about 30 feet in the air before he realized there wasn't any tree there. <laughs> He run around the house one day, my aunt was out there making pumpkin butter, you know, how had a big kittle and, and how they make it out in the open. And the word that cat wasn't running around between her legs and that dog did too, knocked her right over backwards in that pumpkin butter. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Didn't no. hurt her, it, it didn't hurt her none, but it kind of got her behind her work, I'm telling you. <laughs> Radio, aren't we? Yes, we are. <laughs> Liza Jane, I've got a gallon, you've got a little Liza Jane, I've got a gallon, you've got a little Liza Jane, Liza Jane, Liza Jane, Liza Jane, Liza Jane, woman divorced her husband. He's driving her buggy. <laughs> you know, hey, I want to, I want to mention Abby Glockner. I, I haven't seen Abby for a long time here tonight. And uh, first time I met Abby, we used to do uh, live shows from his place. Not four from here, right there on the corner, Second and and uh, Chillicothe Street, right by the bridge. That was Glockner Chevrolet. I come back from... Uh, World War II, I went in there and ordered me a brand new Chevrolet. I think it was $800. Is that about right? $800. Never did get it. You know, they kept <laughs> kept going there and say, well, you know, we, we got them on order, but they never <laughs> they never did come. But it wasn't long, $800 was gone, so it didn't make any difference anyhow. He got married, and then he couldn't afford it. <laughs> That's what happened to his new Chevy, but he did check on it for a long time. <laughs> you know, I, I courted Doris on a bicycle. And I borrowed that off my nephew, but uh, she stood, stood with me through thick and thin and getting thicker all the time. <laughs> you know, uh, I'd like to say something. <laughs> this well, is, go right ahead. 
this boy that's so embarrassed over here is our son. He's the engineer at WNXT. And look how red he is. Well, what's he embarrassed about? <laughs> I think it's his dad. <laughs> you know, we was coming back from Nashville one time. We pulled in this little restaurant over there in Kentucky about 6 o'clock in the morning. A lot of cars. You know, if you want to go to a restaurant, go where there's a big crowd, that's where the food's good, you know. And we went in there, and uh, this guy come up, rubbed his hands together, and says, Welcome, we got the best food this side of the Allegheny Mountains. Well, we got home fries, we got uh, Virginia cooked ham, we got uh, home fried potatoes, eggs, any way you want them. And uh, he said, We got a special, we butcher them today, we just have this once, uh, once a year, and we got deep fried calf tongue. And Doris says, ain't, she said, there ain't no way I'm going to eat anything and come out of a, an animal's mouth. She said, just fix me a couple eggs. But, uh, I think we're about ready to get off of here. <laughs> you know? Not yet. I think it's time to quit. We're glad we got to come to Jeff Horton's Jamboree. Well, he wanted me to stay 15 minutes, and I told him he was only going to stay 10. <laughs> okay, you've got five more minutes. Get it over with. You don't, she, she don't like my jokes. I've only heard them about a thousand times. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. Let's, let's do take back Tulsa. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> this is the truth. You don't, you all want to hear it, don't you? This is the truth with my hand up. Uh, we was going to go out to some little school to do a show, and Doris was taking a shower, and she said, Honey, will you run over to Richard's Dues and get me a pair of pantyhose? And I said, What color? And she said, It don't make any difference. So I went over to Richard's Dues, and I'm spinning that wheel around, and there one there says, Petite. And I thought, Well, that looks like a pretty nice color. I'll take that. And uh, that's the truth. I went home and tossed the man there and said, Put them on, honey, we're going to be late. You remember how String Bane used to look? She come waddling out there and said, what in the world did you buy me anyhow? But I found out what petite meant. And that's what, and that, that's what she wants me out of here for. Well, 
Is that where we do that, Steve? Uh, uh, I have no idea. The other night when I come home, as hard as I could say, I saw a horse in a stable where my horse told me. Come here, my wife, a pretty little wife, explained his name to me. How come a horse in a stable where my horse ought to be? Stranger. Could you tell me how far it is to Little Rock? Well, no, ma'am, I couldn't, but there's a devil digging down there in Fab's old field. Hello, stranger. Well, hello there, stranger. Your corn looks awful little yellow. Yes, I planted a little yellow kind this year. You must not figure only on about half a crop. That's right. We're raising on the chairs this year, 50-50. Oh, you couldn't be very far from my food. That's right, ma'am. Just this microphone here between us. Hello, stranger. Well, hello there, stranger. How'd your potatoes turn out? Uh, you'll have to speak just a little louder. I can't hear too well out of this last ear. How'd your taters turn out? Oh, my taters. They didn't turn out at all. The old sow rooted them out. <laughs> Hello, stranger. Why, hello there, stranger. Would you turn that cow for me? Uh, Harry Side's already turned out. Would you head that cow for me? He's got a head. Well, turn her then. Uh, I said the Harry Side's turned <laughs> out. <laughs> well, speak to her then. Good morning, old heifer. <laughs> Why don't you cover your house? Well, I tell you, when it's raining, I can't, and when the sun's shining, it don't leave. Hello, stranger. Well, hello there, stranger. I just wondered if I could cross the river down there. Right down there? Right down there. Well, I expect you could. I saw seven or eight ducks crossing down there just a little while ago. Well, how deep is it? I don't know how deep it is, but I'll tell you one thing. Oh, what's that? There's water all the way to the bottom. Hello, stranger. 
stranger? Hello there, stranger. You're getting stranger all the time. Where's your brother, ma'am? Oh, my brother, he's dead. He's dead? What happened? Well, a couple weeks ago, he's out there in the yard digging a well. He dug it upside down, and he fell out and broke his neck. <laughs> Stranger. I wonder if you could tell me what time that 9.30 bus leaves town. That 9.30 bus? That 9.30 bus. Well, uh, which way are you going? I'm still trying to get to Little Rock. Well, I tell you, ma'am, you can't get to Little Rock on that 9.30 bus. Well, why can't I? Because that 9.30 bus don't go that way. <laughs> Stranger. Do you mind if I ask myself a question and answer it, too? No, I tell you, I'd kind of like to hear you do that. Well, then how come there's no dirt around the top of the gopher hole? All right, that's your question. Now you answer it. Because the little gopher starts at the bottom and digs up. Wait just a minute. Hold this hole right, right, right there, ma'am. Uh, how's the little gopher get down there in the first place? That's your question. You answer it. <laughs> Well, hello there, stranger. Do you know where this road goes? Uh, well, I tell you, I lived here for the past 40 years, and it ain't went no place yet. Well, how far is it to Little Rock? I've already told you. I just don't know. I don't believe you know anything. Well, I tell you, I, I think you're just about right, but I know one thing. What's that? I ain't lost. <laughs>
got a quarter for Christmas. You know, I can remember back about 50 years ago when I was 11 years old, I got a quarter for Christmas, and believe it or not, that Christmas stands out in my memory just like it was yesterday. You know, it really don't take a lot of expensive presents to make a wonderful Christmas. Somehow some people think so. Now, this was in the middle of the Big Depression. My dad was a barber in 1932. His bring-home pay was about $8 a week, sometimes less. On this particular week before Christmas, Dad had an exceptionally good week at the barber shop, and he took in $12. Mom fixed a delicious Christmas dinner with chicken and dumplings, baked beans, homemade fruit salad, and homemade pies, and banana cake. My mom used to bake a cake in a round fry pan, and she would make about three or four layers, and between each layer, she would slice up bananas and then whip up some kind of a icing with sugar and egg whites, and our family just loved it. The whole family was home, and we had been told there was no money for presents, but we would have each other's company, and we would have a delicious dinner. It was bitter cold, and we heated the house with a big warm morning coal stove. On winter evenings, we'd all gather in the living room and bound the big stove and listen to the radio. My dad was saying how lucky we were, a big snow on about two feet out there and 15 degrees outside, and we had plenty of coal in the shed and plenty of food in the house. Now what more could you ask for in the middle of a hard winter during the Big Depression? After Christmas dinner, we were all stuffed and feeling good and warm, and my dad was looking out the glass of the front door, watching the big snowflakes come down, and suddenly he turned around and said, you know what, I forgot to give all you kids your Christmas present. He had three quarters in his hand, one for my brothers, Kobe and Johnny, and one for me, and we were delighted. The Eastland Theater had a Christmas matinee, Bob Steele, in a cowboy movie. It cost 10 cents to get in. And us kids bundled up in our hand-me-down coats and started out through the snowstorm to the movie, just as happy as if we had a bag full of expensive presents. That evening when we returned home, there was a big pan of English walnuts, apples, hard Christmas candy, and even a few chocolate drops, my favorite. Dad had gone for a walk after it quit snowing over on 8th Street, where there was a store open on Christmas afternoon. He brought home the nuts and candy for us to enjoy as we sat around the big fire that Christmas evening. Yes, this was the year I got a quarter for Christmas, and it truly was one of the happiest that I can remember. And now I'd like to wish you and yours a Merry Christmas, and God bless you, one and all. And thanks for listening. Lots of luck, and for goodness sakes now, behave yourself, won't you? We've got to go. To finish off the tape, here's Ralph Schistler on his dulcimer.